Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, we'll be learning about how to define functions in Scilab. Now, to define a function in Scilab, we use a keyword called function. And when you type it, Scilab adds some of the syntax for you. And after typing function, what you need to give is a variable name and it is known as the output variable. And let's say I call it A and then you type in an equal sign and then the name of the function let's say I call my function my func and in these brackets right here you type in the arguments name or you can also call them input variables now let's say I want to define a function that calculates the area of a given rectangle so I need two input variables or arguments for that one for the length and the other for, for the breadth now just hit enter and in in the line here what you can do is you can type the formula for area and it's pretty easy it's x times y that is length into breadth is the area of a rectangle also as you can see a here is my output variable and this value is going to be returned whenever my func is called and to call this function just save the program and let's save it by the name of my func and run this program now to call this function just type in the function name and pass the values of length as well as breadth as the arguments let's say the length of my rectangle is 5 and the breadth is 4 so we pass those values and we get the answer that is the area is 20. Now since we are going to be solving a number of differential equations so you need to be very good at defining functions and you need to know everything about them. So this is a pretty basic way of defining a function. You just type in the keyword function and then the output variable which in this case is a you can give it any name that you want and then an equal sign and after that the function name again you can give it any name that you want I just call it my func we can even call it area and then save the program and call this function by its new name that is area and then pass different arguments and get the answer then this x comma y are the input variables or the arguments and here we define what a is equal to which and this value would be returned whenever we call the function area okay so that's how you define a function in scilab now another thing that i want to tell you is that unlike other programming languages um, in scilab what you can do is you can have multiple output variables and what I mean by that is that you can have a function return a variety of or a number of values. For example, if I have more than one output variables, then what I need to do is I need to use square brackets and enter those variable names separated by a comma. Let's say I have two output variables and I'm going to define a function that returns the area of a sphere the surface area of the sphere to be precise as well as the volume of the sphere so let's call this function sphere and in the arguments I only need one that is the radius of the sphere so and as we know the formula for a, the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r square so just enter that and the formula for the volume of the sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube so let me just enter that by 3 so Whenever I call this function sphere and I pass the value of the radius as the argument, then what this function is going to return is 
it is going to return a value of the area as well as the volume of the sphere. Now let's just save your program and execute it by clicking right here. Now one thing that would be different this time would be the way I call this function now because since there are two values being returned and if I just type in sphere and I pass a value for its radius say 4 and if I hit enter right here then I get only one value in return and I don't know exactly if that is the area or the volume so the difference in calling a function this time is that you need to call it this function now by this method you need to type in a square bracket then say you want to store the value of the surface area in a variable called sur and the value of the volume in a variable called vol and then end these square brackets and then type an equal sign and the function name and now you can call the function by passing an argument for or by passing a value for its radius now since this function returns two values and the first one would be stored in surface or sur and the other one that is for volume would be stored right here and if you hit enter the program will tell you that volume is 268.08257 and sir is 201.06193 so that's the difference of calling a function this time okay so now we know how to define functions and how we can have multiple output variables and its use lies in that we can have multiple return arguments so unlike other languages we don't need to define a variety of functions for just adding features we can just define a single function have multiple return or output variables for different things which saves up a lot of time in defining new functions I guess that could be an advantage now there's yet another way of defining functions in Scilab and that is um, instead of returning the value of the function in, a, in an output variable like a or multiple output variables like in this case instead of doing this we, what we can do is that we can have the function return these values to a matrix also so let's say I create a function called func and it takes up three arguments for the length breadth and the height of a cuboid and this time this output variable v would in fact be a matrix as I will demonstrate shortly now let's have this function called func return uh, the surface area of one side of the cuboid as well as the volume of the cuboid so let's say that the first element of this matrix v stores the area of a side and that is pretty easy that is x times y and the second element of this matrix V would store the volume which is x times y times z so in this case whenever we call this function called func and pass the values for x y and z what we will get in return is we will get two values that is the area of a side as well as the volume of the cuboid now let's just see how uh, to go about it execute your function and type in func and give some values for the length breadth and height and we get the answer that is 12 which represents or corresponds to the area of a side 3 times 4 12 and the other answer is 60 which corresponds to the volume of the cuboid which is 3 times 4 times 5 now why I call V a single column matrix is because if you try to store the value that this function right here returns in some matrix let's say I want to store this value in a matrix called cuboid 
and I call this function and pass some values for the length, breadth, and height. Um, let me just make this a little bigger. So now, if you press enter, what you get is that cuboid now stores the following two values that is 12 and 36. And if you go to your variable browser and click on cuboid, what you get is that the first row of this single column matrix stores 12 that is the area of a side and the second row stores the volume of the cuboid now let's just recap on the three ways of defining functions in scilab so the first way is pretty simple you give the output variable name then the function name and then the input variables so or the arguments and then you specify a formula for the output variable and it will return this value whenever it is called the second way is to have multiple output variables like a b c and so on and then the function name then the arguments and then you will have to specify the return values or some formulas for each of the output variables and and in the third way what uh, instead of having an output variable what you have is an output matrix whose first row is the stores the first element the second row stores the third e second element and so on and usually this is a single column matrix i hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new today in case you have some queries don't forget to drop them in the comment section down below and don't forget to subscribe